big things are happening in the Animate Diff world. They've recently released these new version 3 models, which seem hotter than a dragon's breath after eating a chili burrito. But the fun doesn't stop there, because there are also a couple of long Animate models from Light Tricks one of which was trained on up to 64 frames. That's twice as long as the others. But the burning question is, how do all of these new models actually hold up? With Animate Diff version 3 comes the release of four new models, a domain adapter, a motion model, and two sparse control encoders. Not sure what any of that jargon means. Well, thankfully, a picture paints a thousand words, and they've given us some to look at. The first one here is for the RGB image conditioning. An RGB image is basically a normal picture, so to speak, which makes this akin to stable video diffusion. That's the model from Stability AI, which also lets you animate from a static image. As you're probably aware though, stable video diffusion is limited by a license which does not allow for commercial use, unless you pay them a monthly fee. For an educator like me, such monthly fees don't make any sense at all piled on top of all the current expenses of putting out these videos. After all, my ongoing mission here is to empower nerds rather than to line my pockets. If you're facing a similar dilemma, then rejoice, as the license here is free as a bird with no paywalls to clip those creative wings. Finally, us nerds can animate images without breaking the bank. Version 3 doesn't just animate single static images though, oh no, because if you look at the scribble example, you'll see not only do they convert a single scribble into an animation, but they also do it using multiple scribbles, three in this case, so it looks like you're able to guide your animation based on these multiple inputs, a sort of sweeping zoom in this case. Unfortunately, I haven't yet found a way to use these sparse controls outside of their implementation, but I'm sure it will only be a matter of time before something is available for either Automatic 1111 or Comfy UI. Uh, knowing my luck, more than likely that will be about 10 minutes after I release this video. Anyway, the LoRa and the Motion Module files are good to go in both Automatic 1111 and Comfy UI, right now. All you have to do is pop them into the usual place for whichever interface you prefer using. I'll start out here by showing Automatic 11.11, then switch over to Comfy to run the comparisons. As you may be aware, the problem with trying to use Automatic for video comparisons is that it's limited to just a single output, whereas in Comfy, you can put everything side by side. Obviously, you'll need to have the Animate Diff extension installed, and the version I'm using here in Automatic is from December 20th. If you need more detailed instructions, do see my previous Animate Diff video, as well as the various GitHub pages. The GitHub page for the Automatic Animate Diff extension also has this really handy link for some FP16 safe tensors files, which also happen to work in Comfy. This type of file is great because not only are they safer to use, but the file size is smaller too. There you can see version 3 weighing in at just 837 meg. This helps to save both load time and valuable disk space. OK, let's get to prompting and testing. As the version 3 model comes with a LoRa, you'll need to enter whatever prompt you like, but also select the LoRa as well. Here I'm going to put in an absolutely amazing prompt, and then to add the LoRa, you just click on the LoRa tab over there, I'm going to use the search here to limit it down to MM. There we can see MMSD153 adapter. We click on that and it adds the text into your prompt at the top there. We can pop back to generation. If we scroll down a bit, we've got the animate diff panel here, which you can expand. Now, this is the version 3 module I'm selecting there. And well, almost everything else is good. I'm going to change these save formats over to web and just leave pretty much everything else on the defaults apart from remembering to select enable otherwise you'll just get a static image 
If you're looking for a full breakdown on what each of those options do, then check out the GitHub page, which has a really detailed write-up. You can get there easily by clicking where it says this link right there as the first thing in the panel. Okay, so this is basically a default. We're getting 16 frames of a rodent. We'll generate and see what happens. Awesome, that's done exactly what I asked for. I've got a rodent riding a motorcycle. There is only a limited amount of animation there, but obviously it's only 16 frames. As you can see, it's really easy to use version three in automatic, but how does this compare to version two? And what about those long animate ones? Well, it's time to switch interface over to Comfy in order to see all those models at once. Just for giggles, let's build this up from scratch as well. We'll start with a standard model over here. I've got these in node templates and I'm just gonna load everywhere. I like to stick all these things in groups as well so I can move them around and see what each bit does. Prompts are good too, so let's add some of those in. As we're going to do a comparison here, I'm going to need four sets of animate diff groups. Group one will be the animate diff version two. Group two is gonna be the new version three model. And for group three and four, I'll put in the different long animate ones. That first one is absolutely fine on the defaults. Here, the second one, we're gonna use the new version three model. Now this also has a LoRa as well, if you remember from automatic. So we may as well pop one of those in too. Let's put it up here. I'll select the version three adapter and then link that in to the model. There we go. Okay, now the next one down here, these are for the long animate ones and these do need slightly different options too. I use the 32 frame one in that one and the 64 frame one in that one. If we check on their GitHub page, we'll see they suggest a motion scale of 1.28 for the 64 and 1.15 for the 32. Right, so those should now have the settings they suggest. Obviously, we're gonna need a K sampler for each of those, so let's add four of those in. A little bit of interpolation too, just to smooth things out. Right, so that's got all four of those in, and obviously we need to connect up the models as well. We're almost done, but we do need some latents. Let's pop that over here in with a LoRa loader. And to start off, we'll do that batch size of 16. It's probably a good idea to use the same seed for each sampler in order to do a comparison. So let's pop a seed in there and I'll also convert each of these, uh, convert noise seed to input. There we go. I'll just do that on all four samplers. I think that's all we're going to need apart from to update the prompt. Uh, may as well use the same one as in automatic. Although actually for these long ones, let's take the context options off as that limits it to 16. Okay, let's run that through and see what happens. Okay, those look to have finished. Let's put them up side by side, make it a little bit easier to see. Okay, so we've got the standard version two, version three, the 32 and the 64 context. Obviously the version two looks pretty good. Version three, quite nice. The long animate ones also look sort of okay. Personally, I kind of prefer these first two. And obviously the generations will vary depending on what seed you put in. So let's increase that context a little bit and change the seed. We'll go for a batch size of 32 and pop the seed up. Let's run that through again and see what happens. Hopefully these long animate ones with that larger context will do a little bit better, but we'll find out in time. Uh, yes, let's do that time warp. All right, so now we've got the results with 32 frames and I think they're all not too bad, certainly. Long Animate seems to have done a little bit better with that higher context. Uh, my favorite is still the original version two. The version three is of course primarily for sparse control, but as you can see, it works great, just like the version two model. The Long Animate one there with the 32 frames, well, I mean, it seems okay. And the 64 frame one 
again seems sort of okay. Now they are a little bit wibbly and that's something that you can help to control a little bit with an input video and control nets, things like that. So let's do that. Let's pop in a video instead of these empty latents. There's the video. Let's just connect up the latent. So instead of that empty one, we're going to have that woman. Now there's no motorcycle in there. So it's probably a good idea to update this prompt as well. All right, now I've got the video input. Let's run that through and see how those come out. And with rendering complete for each of those, I think you can see once again, each of the models has given a slightly different output. Um, I think I prefer version three. Version two is very nice. I love the way her face turns into an actual rodent. That's pretty good. And the two long animate ones. Um, I don't know. I quite like the last one. That's not too bad. But your mileage, of course, may vary. As mentioned before, the main thing with the version three is the stuff we can't actually use yet, the sparse controls, but it still works very well with both text to image and image to image as well. And once we do get those sparse control nets for version three, I think that's going to be a real game changer. As it's the festive season, I'll also take this opportunity to wish you a good one. And I reckon 2024 is going to bring us even more amazing geekery.